Hello everybody, today I will be doing a video walkthrough and semi-review of the 2.1 Android update for the Motorola Click. This is a um, leaked developer's version of it and it's not final. Uh, I will post a link to a video explaining how to do this on your Click if you are so inclined to do so. So the first thing you'll notice is that the uh, they implemented the more common slide to unlock. There's nothing on the right side for muting as that is what the switch right here does anyway. But uh, we'll slide this to unlock. You'll see that the bottom drawer has changed. You can no longer drag it up. You have to tap it. And instead the app drawer fills up the whole um, screen. This is a little bit laggy and this is probably the most laggy part of the phone. That said it's not unusable by any means. Also you'll see that there's now seven home screens instead of the five and that this thing down here at the bottom shows up when you switch in between them. What you can do with that is you can click down here and as you drag your finger you can quickly change screens. So that's good but the thing, thing I don't like about it is that when you're switching these you have to wait till this bottom thing goes away until you can access your app drawer. So that's kind of annoying. Um, to prove that this is 2.1, and this is Motoblur and everything like that, it's the uh, leaked update, as I said. We will go down right here, 2.1, hopefully you can see that, update 1. And right here, Blur version 2.0.25, blah, blah, blah. The settings page is also slightly, it looks a little bit different, nothing big, but it looks a little bit different. There's also a... Um, and getting into battery too. There's a battery use then and that will tell you what uses the most of your battery. I have noticed a decrease in my battery life. I'm not a heavy user of my phone. Um, certainly when you have Wi-Fi on the battery does drain a lot faster so if you are going to do this I would recommend turning off Wi-Fi whenever not in use because it does, it does drain your battery. Um, so far today I've only made a couple of text messages and I unplugged my phone at about 10 o'clock it's 157 right now and I'm at 91 percent so battery isn't horrible but heavy use I don't heavy use does drain battery quite frequently you will also see uh, new icon updates such as text messaging Gmail the browser is a little bit different you have marketplace this is the uh, 2.1 marketplace I have heard from some people that some apps will not install or download one of the two but uh, I haven't had that problem yet, but I'm sure it does exist. I'm just not downloading the right kind of apps. Um, the App Store does seem to have some connectivity problems with me. Whenever I'm on Edge, it has a hard time loading, and oftentimes it'll bring up the cannot load and have a thing that says retry or cancel. So I've had some problems with that as well. Um, browser, still no multi-touch at all. But uh, as far as within the browser, there's you know some issue there. Um, no multi-touch. I think you can do double tap to zoom. I haven't really messed around with that too much, but I'm pretty sure you can. Um, as far as messaging goes, you have full access to all 2.1 apps. And also now, they implemented a new keyboard. And this new keyboard is the, uh, supposedly it's the Click XT keyboard. So you know, it's a uh, sister phone. And it's a little bit better, I think. It's for sure better. Um, trying to type off center a little bit here. Um, there's also a magnifying glass for selecting text, which is great, even though it has the, uh, even though the click does have the uh, D-pad, this is still a nice addition. Um, if you slide open the keyboard, you will still see, now you start getting text, um, spell check, and like recommendations. So that's, for me, that's a great, because honestly, I'm a pretty bad speller. And to see that thing's down there to make it, because before I'd have to close that, open up the virtual keyboard, type it in to try to find my right word if I didn't know how to spell it. So that is um, a great thing to implement. Contacts, I noticed, have changed a little bit. I'm going to try to page off here a little bit, but give me one second. We'll go to 411 and more. And then when we... uh. So contacts have changed a little bit. When we go into edit, there's a whole lot of options. You can do name prefix, 
um, given name, middle name, family name, name suffix, just a ton of different name options that some of them I don't even know what m they mean. Um, it's also broken down a little bit more, so you have to actually open up something, you know. Emails doesn't just show up automatically, you have to open it up to hide it, and stuff like that. Oh, what else? You get some of the more widgets, and I'll get into this one. Um, that's the power control. Oh, also the music player. The music player is supposedly also the Click XT music player. I haven't messed around too much with it, but, uh, I don't listen to music a ton on my phone. All the same, it's, uh, you can check it out in other videos as well that maybe go a little bit farther into it. I don't go too much. When you tap and hold, there are no live wallpapers, unfortunately. That's all you get is media gallery or wallpapers. So no live wallpapers. Um, folders, shortcuts are the same. Now, Mo now Motorola has split widgets into two different ones, much like HTC did with their Sense UI. Um, there's downloaded widgets, which will be widgets that are pre-installed with the phone, like analog clock, and ones that you download separately. So like Facebook, I downloaded Power Control came, Search came, Weather all this downloaded YouTube came. Um, also in terms of that bat stat one was this um, widget right here in case if any of you guys were wondering. Motorola widgets has changed quite a bit. There are now toggles for every single mode. Um, Bluetooth, airplane, the calendar is the same. I haven't messed around with this connected music player. I'm not sure quite what it does. Um, contacts, date and time, GPS toggle happenings, messages, news, photo, social, sticky note, weather, and Wi-Fi toggle. So the biggest thing for me is the toggles. I think that they are um, make the biggest difference. As far as with this news one, you can now resize widgets as well. Certain widgets you can resize, which I think is a nice feature. Um, although I question the implication sometimes, it still is a nice feature to have. If we page all the way over to the right, we'll see a couple of them. This is the uh, this is the calendar, and this is the date and time widget. These are both resizable. I have them set pretty low right now. Uh, I don't know if this one is resizable. I guess it is resizable. Oh, maybe not. There. Yeah, so that's resizable as well. There are some limits as to how you can resize a certain app. Um, the browser, as I said, I ran through it before. I don't see a whole huge... There's not a huge difference, really. Um, the browser pretty well looks the same. The notifications have changed a little bit, actually. Um, with some of the notifications, you can go... Like, the icons will change. With text messaging, they've changed. Um, emails, they look a little bit different. The download stuff from the market is still the same. The alarm and time now has a built-in, I'm pretty sure, I never saw this before, but it now has a built-in timer. So that's kind of neat. It'd be nice to see a stopwatch in there as well, but oh well. Um, also within here, most of this stuff works, by the way. Camera, camcorder, they all work. Compass works, where my compass didn't work on my old software on 1.5 for some reason. I don't know why. You see Google Goggles right here, so that's kind of also proving that this is uh, another one, uh, that this is real. Um... I am, which is, I'm pretty sure, added latitude. You have navigation now. That works. Messaging, music. Um, here's a couple things. This phone portal, which I'm not quite sure does, and I puts up a notif it puts up something in the notification bar I have to clear out, and it's annoying. But this performance one, I'm not sure if this will stay around for the official update. I don't think it will, but it shows your CPU usage, your uh, RAM, and every time your CPU gets close to 100%, it will pop up a notification up there warning you. So, I mean, think of that what you want, really. Um, and other than that, I haven't looked at this Timo contact utilities yet, but I think, oh yeah, it, it generates random contacts or something like that. Add 20 canned test contacts, add random contacts. I don't know what it does. I think it's for testing. Um, so I doubt that will show up in the real version. An important thing to note is that when you go through and do this, um, you will lose all of your apps from your phone before 
you can sign in with your motor blur account like you did you know you can sign in with your motor blur account and get all your contacts and all that information back but um there's a little trick to it um in the description of the video i'll be linking to it explains how to do that but uh like i just went through and i wrote down all my i went through and i wrote down all my apps that i had on my old phone i had on my phone before i flashed this version on it um as far as good or bad i like it overall i mean the battery i notice i do notice a slight drain in battery whereas before i would end the day with usually more than 50% now i'm always under 50% usually around 30s which is no big deal but um heavier users than myself might need to go through and uh be careful or charge halfway through the day i know my click charges pretty fast so that's always a good thing but um I don't know, like I said, I think it's definitely worth the upgrade for now. Um, I don't imagine that the official up that the official update is too far away, considering that this is f like pretty well perfected. Um, a few minor, so, you know, snags. I get some notifications. I can't sign into YouTube for some reason. Like it keeps airing. It keeps sending me error messages. But uh, other than that, so far it's been really good. I like it a lot. I think it's well worth it. I have heard that once the 2.1 Android update is officially released from, Mid from Motorola, some people think that you will need to flash back to the uh, 1.5 cupcake version before you can download it through the, your uh, phone and your device. This is not a huge deal. The file is included in the description, or a link is included in the description of the video I will be linking to. It's from a uh, pretty it's from a guy that does a lot of click stuff on YouTube, and he's pretty good. But um, when you check for system updates, you would need a flashback. Um, other than that, I would recommend it. You don't lose your photos. You don't lose anything on your SD card or anything like that. I still have all my photos. I backed them up just in case because I wasn't sure. But you do keep your photos. Um, I haven't seen anything that I actually lost besides for the apps. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just everything stored on your system memory rather than your SD card that gets lost. And... uh as long as you can sign back into your motor blur account, you may, de you may need to make a new one, but even then, you just have to go through and relink your profiles. It's not a huge deal. That has been a little walkthrough and review of the 2.1 Android update for the Motorola Click, and I hope that you guys have a good day. Thanks for watching my video, and if you want to, hit that subscription bar. I plan to be doing more stuff soon. Thank you. Have a good day.